Hi there, one. It is currently the 6th of May, 2015. Meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you today in this Western Pacific Weather.com update. Uh, I do want to stress before I really get into this, a lot of stuff to talk about today. So this is probably going to take about 10 minutes or so. Definitely, if you want to skip ahead, we're going to be also talking about developing a dolphin. Actually, next name on the list is dolphin, contributed by the USA. And uh, yeah, that one could potentially impact Guam. But the bulk of this update, we're going to be talking about severe tropical storm though it is now moving over yap actually it has already moved over yap winds recorded out there on the island uh right around 112 kilometers per hour the max gust 61 knots uh, recorded here in the overnight hours. Actually, I have some video. I uh, found this on YouTube coming out of the island. Nothing too intense, just a lot of trees blowing around there. Yap is built for typhoons. So I, I, I assume there hasn't been any significant damage, and I haven't seen any reports of damage out here. You do remember this island. Uh, it didn't take the brunt of my sock, but the so other islands farther towards the north on Ulithi and Fice took the brunt of this storm or that storm system and i'm actually quite curious how they fared in this because recovery efforts still ongoing even though this was a tropical storm likely still had a pretty significant impact on those smaller islands just off there towards north so let's talk about this storm system well where is it right now take a look at this this is the himawari 8 satellite usually we have the mt sat up here but i just want to show you this so you can find this at the, web, the website at western pacific weather under satellite imagery we have our storm system right here very high resolution coming in from the himawari but also back towards the east there's another low and that is uh, dolphin developing over there right now though this storm definitely becoming more organized this is the satellite you're probably a little more used to seeing with our mt sat coming a little more organized it is fighting some dry air off there towards the north but it has an abundance and definitely an, an excessive amount of moisture flowing in from the intertropical convergence zone down there towards the south we even put up this uh microwave imagery on the satellite imagery here and this uh, shows you how much moisture is kind of in the atmosphere Atmosphere and you can just see that wrapping in, but that drier inflow, as I just mentioned, coming in from the north. Let's take a look a little bit closer on the satellite imagery here, though, uh, with this storm system, at least at this time. And uh, what we can see, at least on the visible imagery, is that organization taking place, as I mentioned, that drier inflow coming in from the north. But the big thing is the convection is definitely becoming more tightly wound. And also on microwave imagery, we could even see an eye starting to develop in that center of circulation. And typically, especially if you don't have hunters, which we do not have, we do not have recon out here in the Western Pacific, when you see an eye start to form, that usually indicates to us that this storm is starting to become uh, more and more uh, towards that typhoon intensity, at least according to the Japan Meteorological Agency. At this time, this has winds of 55, gusting to 80 knots, pressure about 985 HPA, moving west at about 15 kilometers per hour. It's been moving west to northwest. Uh, I do want to note, you, you've seen that I'm calling this a severe tropical storm. This is something that is... Uh, unique the JMA. They divide tropical storm intensities to two categories. You see with JTWC and also on the Saffron Simpson scale, you just have the tropical storm. But JMA divides it up between a severe tropical storm and a tropical storm when the storm gets upwards about 89 kilometers per hour uh, up to 117 kilometers per hour sustained. Now, you have to get to that 119 threshold for a typhoon. It's basically the same thing uh, for JTWC and also a hurricane if we're talking about uh, the Saffron Simpson scale. So just a little comparison here. Um, if you do want to, go to the website under scale so you can check out this comparison. I, I put this together and I think it is kind of helpful if you are confused about these intensities that we are using here. So where's the storm system going? That's the big question. All right, so right now, just moving away from Yap. This area in the red, that's the storm warning from JMA. They do have it basically extending over here uh, towards Visayas and extending across much of the country over there towards the west and the southern Luzon. I think that this area, you're not going to be seeing... Um, 50 knot winds excessive as this points out you're probably going to see a little bit less there i think the storm is going to stay just off the coastline I mean, even if we look at the uh five day outlook in just a second here you can see the center line just stays off the coast also this is expected to continue to intensify to that typhoon by the time thursday morning rolls around here and 
by the time you're watching this update, it might be probable that it already is a typhoon. So just keep that in mind. Uh, please don't leave in the comment box that it's already upgraded. It hasn't upgraded by the time I made this video. So here's the five-day forecast track. JMA does keep it off the coastline. I do know some of the models kind of veering it back towards the west, though. I'll get into that in a second as why some of the numerical guidance is actually pulling it over Luzon. But the big thing to keep in mind here, and anytime we talk about a five-day extended track, is you look from west to east on that cone of air. And yes, the cone of air continues to extend over most of Luzon. I don't think Manila, you're gonna worry about this storm system, but much of northern Luzon, this could bring some widespread precipitation and definitely the gale force winds, um, at the very least, high surf up and down the eastern seaboards. So let's take a look at our Meteorith app here, and let's zoom right in on our storm. This is by the time Saturday, let's rewind it a little bit here by Friday, the storm starts to come in from the south, as you just seen there on that uh, track. Then we, as we go ahead through Saturday and Sunday, it eventually starts to move, just skidding the coastline. If it comes a little bit closer, of course the winds will be higher and vice versa. But I think it actually might lean a little bit closer to the coast before it's turning off there towards the north. And you can see here by Sunday, just clipping the coast there in Kaigayan, just off the coast of Apari. Um, good news, this area is known for typhoons. You, you're not really surprising to get one, especially at this intensity. Likely could be around a strong typhoon intensity over towards a very strong one, about a category three, maybe a category four equivalent on the Saffron Simpson scale, uh, as it does just roll off the northeast coastline here. If it does come a little bit farther towards the southwest, though, I think the bigger issue would be the rainfall, mountain uh, landslides, and also valley flooding coming out of this, especially in this mountainous terrain just off there towards the north. And actually, I think I put the 120 hour rainfall accumulation yeah it's a pretty <laughs> extended uh, range here actually before I get into that I do want to show you this uh, the five-day forecast track now this is beyond five days by the way uh, this is just my analysis based on remember this is not super typhoon strong typhoon I just showed you that a second ago with the scale changes this is from JMA. They use strong to very strong. Some people actually thought this meant violent super typhoon. Goodness, no. Vi very strong typhoon heading into the weekend. And then this could recurve and then push off there towards the southern Japanese islands. And actually, this is something I'm watching very closely, thinking about maybe heading down there to film this storm if it does move into that direction. I'm in Tokyo, by the way. So if it does come in that direction, that might occur. But... By the time that happens, it's going to be moving at a fairly fast pace. So if you are in Okinawa, don't extremely worry about this storm system because, first off, the island definitely built for typhoons. Second, by the time it moves down this way, this early in the season, um, it likely will already be weakening and it'll be moving at a fairly fast pace. So you might think this is it. Um, yeah, especially for a May typhoon that far towards the north, usually not that intense. Okay, there's that rainfall accumulation uh, that I was talking about a second ago here. Um, this is from the ECMWF, and if the storm does stay on that track I just showed you, which JMA is basically showing at this time, most of the rainfall stays off there towards the north. But as I mentioned, if it does swing a little bit farther towards the west, that could be a big game changer with this area here. Seeing about three to 400 millimeters of rain, well, that would just be superimposed a little bit farther towards the west. So that's one thing you also got to keep in mind if you're going to be talking about this. What's going on? Why is the storm turning off here towards the north? Well, this is the big deal. We have our subtropical ridge we always talk about here, and we have the jet stream a little bit farther off here towards the north. It's that weakening in the subtropical ridge due to a passing trough that really makes the difference on the extent this storm uh, basically races off here towards an orb or if it cuts over Luzon. What the idea is right now is that this area right here, that's going to move back a little bit farther towards the west and allow our storm system to kind of just stay on the eastern periphery of it and stay off the coastline of Luzon. Now if this weakens completely, then it would come in, especially if a ridge builds in towards the north here. That's why, since this is moving at a fairly slow pace, it's kind of getting hard to pinpoint if that would come on shore or not. It's only a difference of a few hundred kilometers, but it really does make all of the difference if you are out here in northern Luzon. So this is something we're definitely going to continue to monitor. Take a look at the ensemble uh, from the GFS, and that also kind of pinpoints what I'm talking about. Some of it gearing over towards Luzon, while some of it just stays offshore. Notice with this 
particular GFS outlook. We also are picking up on Dolphin, which is back there towards the east. I do want to mention this one fairly quickly here because it is developing um, basically around the Chook area. It is starting to get some organization together. Um, now a low pressure area, the Japan Meteorological Agency um, is expecting this to become a tropical depression in the next 24 hours, at least a minor tropical depression. I do believe the Joint Typhoon Warning Center also is calling this a medium area. Uh, that means uh, medium chance of development in the next 24 hours. So most of the agencies are all saying, yes, this is in route to development. What's going to happen with it? That's the big question. Well, I think um, Dolphin more so for Guam. That is the area that wants to be watching this one. Because as you can already see, this develops here by Sunday. It's moving just over Chook, but most of the numerical guidance actually takes it right over Guam. It's a fairly intense storm system. A week from today. Keep that in mind. It's still a long range. Still a lot of time to watch this one. But it's there. If you're in Chook, remember they took the brunt of my sock as well. Already six storms so far this season. Just incredible amount. Well, this is another one developing, and I think it's going to impact Chook first and then move over towards Guam. Depends on how quickly it develops. Could be a significant impact on Chook as well. All right, guys, that is an 11-minute long update, a little bit longer than I anticipated. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them down there in the comment box below. I always appreciate your feedback. Um, yeah, just uh, one more quick look at here. This is actually the wind gust um, expected with the ECMWF model, so it is going to be a rough one out there if you are along the eastern seaboards of Luzon. If you have any questions, though, just let me know down there in the comment box below. Uh, you can also post them on Facebook and Twitter at Western Pacific Web. Whether you can follow me at Robert Spetta. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and also well, hit the like button. I really appreciate that. If you watched all 12 minutes of this video, let me know in the comment box down below. I always appreciate that. I'm always finding it interesting when I do ask that question and no one posts anything. It usually tells me um, not to talk so much. All right, guys, stay safe out there.